Welcome back to the Open Source Intelligent Lecture Series. So today, I would start the discussion on uh, fundamentals of cryptography. So before you follow the, the tools, so you should have uh, ideas about uh, cryptography. Otherwise, uh, some of the tools uh, you may not be able to use first. Uh, by give, getting the idea of cryptography, you will be able to kind of build, uh, collect information over the internet. Uh, objective of the cryptography is to provide mainly integrity, confidentiality, authenticity, and non repudiation of information data. So integrity refers to unauthorized alterations. So if you have, uh, if you collect the data for anywhere, or if you kind of access the data, you need to make sure this data is not altered or not fabricate. How do you achieve that? So if you have a data set, let's say collected, and then later on, someone might inject some data into that. So then let's say you train a model or you kind of did some machine learning uh, activity on this data set, fabricated data set, then obviously your finding is wrong. Because of that, so kind of after and before collecting the data, you need to make sure that data is kind of original, unaltered. For that, integrity requirement should achieve. Then the confidentiality. So confidentiality refers to unauthorized access. Some of the data you collected for St. Ferg's or some other works. So you need to make sure nobody access those information, the data. Some of the data which you have collected has confidential information, private information. So it's your responsibility to protect those. So that for that, you need to achieve confidentiality requirement. Then authenticity of the data is also important. The data need to be authentic. That means you need to know from where this data comes from. You need to know the people or the group or the organization which creates this data. So it should be authentic. And finally, non repudiation. So, non repudiation may not so important for data analytic or OC, but it is important in the transactions. If you use any OC input on transactions, and identify and some culprits so identify some people for some time or something else. So they should not be able to deny the action. In other words, you should be able to collect legally valid evidence on actions. So non repudiation discusses about how to collect, how to create legally valid evidence on the electronic transactions. So in order to achieve integrity, confidentiality, authenticity, and non repudiation cryptography is used. So cryptography is the main tool you must use to achieve those. So you should know what it is. I'm not going into detail of the algorithms, 
but I will give a quick overview of cryptography and their usage in few hours. Basic terms of cryptography. Basic, three is basic set of cryptography algorithms we can see. First set we call it as hashing algorithm. Second set we call it as symmetry key cryptography algorithm. The third set we call it as public key or symmetric key cryptography algorithms. So all the applications, secure applications, or whatever internet applications, build their security using one of these algorithms. By applying these algorithms, what we try to achieve is integrity, authenticity, confidentiality, and non-repudiation of the information. Cryptographic concept started long time ago, like maybe 5,000, 3,000 years ago. It, the, this subject applies to uh, information security later on, but it started long time ago due to a civil war. Oh, sorry, due to a war, not only civil wars, due to the wars between different groups. The main foundation of cryptography is how to send a message from a battlefield to the past. So people were thinking about different ways to do so. So how do you transfer? some message from the battlefield here to the Kazi without exposing it to the interme intermediate authorities. So how to do that? So that is the main application, historical application of cryptography. In cryptography, we will use some terms so for example, any information that human can read, call it as plain text. So this information we transfer into a data which nobody will be able to understand. So that is called as ciphertext. So the process which converts plain text into the ciphertext, call it as encryption. The algorithm Mathematical algorithm used to do so for it has cipher algorithm or encryption algorithms. Then the ciphertext can convert back to the human readable plain text. So that process usually called as decryption. Right? After the decryption process, we receive the plain text. So people who in the battlefield has the message, human readable message, they apply into the cipher algorithm, then that algorithm produces the message called ciphertext. So that ciphertext transfer to the cousin, the, the king or whatever the soldier here want to read them. So he pass the ciphertext into the cipher algorithm back and he get back the plain text. So the converting plain text into a ciphertext, call it as encryption. Converting ciphertext back to the plain text, call it as decryption. So when you say plain text, it not only refers text messages, it refers any data in human readable form. So why we transfer those intangible data, plain text, into the unintangible data, Cybertext. Why we do so? We do so to provide the confidentiality or to stop unauthorized people accessing those data. I repeat, encryption process 
pass the plaintex to the cybertext. Decryption process pass the cybertext back to the plaintex. So in these two process, we use some other input. So that is called as security key. Usually we use the same security key for encryption process and the decryption process. So how do you going to share this key between these two endpoints? We will discuss later on. But usually same security key is used in encryption and the decryption. So as you understood, so if someone knew the key, they should have taken the data. So we have to key, keep the key sacred. So in the history too, right now, people try to achieve the confidentiality by keeping the key sacred. Some group of people try to achieve the confidentiality by keeping the algorithm sacred. Some cryptographer lives in 19th century, developed a principle called Kirchhoff principle, describes what should we do, whether we keep the algorithm sacred or we keep the key sacred. He has proved, obviously, keeping the key sacred is the best method. So that usually call it as Kirchhoff principle. That principle says, crypto system should be secure even if everything about the system except the key is public knowledge. Opposite to that is called as obscurity. So if you try to hide the algorithm and to achieve the security, that call it as obscurity. Why? So if you hide the algorithm, one day, someday, someone find the key. So if they find the key, so they will access to your information at present, plus his, hysterical all the information. The same key is used for encryption and decryption. Because of that, key should be key sacred. So let, similar to the algorithm as well, but let's say we keep the algorithm sacred. Someone found the algorithm. Then what happened? They would recover your data. So then you need to immediately change your algorithm. So changing the algorithm is harder than changing the key. Key set of random numbers, mathematical algorithms are very unique. So we can have large number of keys in a given key space. So if someone found your key, you can easily change your key and continue your communication. But, but if someone found the algorithm, you might face difficulties on changing the algorithm. Because of that, Obscurity is not a good practice. So we had to keep key sacred so we can keep algorithm public. So that's the basic fundamental principle, foundation principle of cryptography. So there are two categories of cryptographic algorithm we're going to study. So one call it as symmetric key cryptographic algorithm. Other call it as a symmetric key cryptographic algorithm. In the symmetric key cryptographic algorithm, we use same key for encryption as well as decryption. So in the symmetric key cryptographic algorithm, we use two different keys. One key for encryption, other key for decryption. So because of that, in the symmetric key system, we should keep private key sacred, private key as sacred. 
public key we can open. So it's, that is a symmetric key. In the symmetric key, we should have only one key. So that key need to be keep central. Need to be keep as central. What are the business applications of cryptography? So almost all business applications require cryptography because information security is an important factor. Nowadays, your information uploaded to the internet, often people might use those. So you want to prevent that. Or your competitor might use this. Competitors might fabricate this information. So you should stop that. So mainly, cryptography is used to detect the tampering, detect injections and the injections of all data, detect deletion of the data, prevent repudiation, prevent unauthorized people accessing those information. These are the application, business application of cryptography. As I repeat, the main goal of cryptographic system is to provide confidentiality, authenticity, integrity, and non-repudiation. Confidentiality refers to unauthorized access. Integrity refers to unauthorized alterations. Authenticity ensures the source of the information. Who created Non-reputation non ensures the legally valid evidence collection. So that stop repudiate the actions. So without using cryptography, it's really hard to achieve confidentiality, to authenticity, integrity, and non-repudiation. One percent information systems. Obviously, in addition to cryptography, there are several other ways to achieve those. But cryptography, the best method to achieve these requirements. Before I discuss the modern cryptographic algorithms in, in, in very abstract level, I would like to discuss historical algorithms, few historical algorithms, to give you a feeling about this field. There are two major cryptographic algorithms cited thousand years ago in two parts of the world. The Western world cited Caesar cipher as the first cryptographic algorithm in the world. So in the Caesar cipher used by the famous empire Julius Caesar for their war purposes or to communicate with their soldiers during the war. So our part of the world, there is a cryptographic algorithm called Council algorithm. So you may have heard about the woman should have 64 arts. Uh, men and women should know about 64 arts. So among those 64 arts which women must know, 44th, 45th describes cryptographic typewriter. So it says women must know cryptography in order to secretly communicate with their partners. After the two major cryptographic calculations in the history 2000, 4000 years ago. So in 19th century, there was an algorithm called Enigma. This Enigma is a mechanical algorithm used by the Hitler during the Second World War. 
So some people believe Hitler lost the war because British scientists has had broken enigma machine. That means Hitler used obscurity. He violated culture principle. He achieved the security by hiding his algorithm. So after British cryptographer found algorithm, Hitler could not secretly communicate anymore. So he lost the war. So then there was a very there was a change in the cryptographic field somewhere in 1976. So two person called Diffie and Martin Hellman oppose very innovative concept to the world called it as public key cryptography that changed this field entirely. That happened in 1976. After that, 1977, three mathematician has introduced very famous cryptographic algorithm called RSA to the world. We are still using this RSA. So if RSA is broken, we have to shut down the internet because most of the internet communication based on either RSA or DFL. Then, there was a new symmetric key algorithm introduced for Regin Dahl. So standard name for this algorithm called AES Advanced Encryption Standard introduced somewhere around 2000. So then there was an algorithm in the public key field introduced for elliptical cryptographic algorithm. So these are the cryptographic algorithms from history to right now. So let's start our discussion from CSA cycle. Okay, CSA cycle. CSA cycle is very simple encryption mechanism. In this cycle, what's happened? We usually shift the alphabet. So for example, I take the English alphabet. So here, encryption is shifting a letter in a given position of the alphabet. So if your message has letter A, it will be replaced by third position of the letter, letter D. And your message has letter B, replaced by letter E, like that. So E usually capitally refers to the encryption algorithm capital V refers to the plain text. So what it says here, plain text I applies the encryption algorithm, create the ciphertext C, CF. So what is E? E is actually PI plus three. Plus three means shifting the th third, three positions. Plain text will be replaced by three positions. So that's how C is the cycle works. So the key for this particular encryption of the cipher algorithm is this number three. So it's used by the Caesar. Caesar usually agreed with the number with the soldiers, it's like number two, number three, number four, like that. So then that particular soldier talked to him using this number that means by replacing the letter by the kth position based on the case the number they design so if two two positions if three three positions like that so that's how this cc cipher works all right so the other historical right arm sutra so it works much better way. So in this algorithm, we usually divide the alphabet into two rows. 
So, for example, when you take the English alphabet, it has 26 alphabet characters that divide into two rows. So then the encryption works in a very simple way. So, for example, we take the alphabet in random form and then divide this alphabet into two rows. So this taken as the key. So that table need to be shared between the sender and the recipient. So this is the key. So then encryption is actually just replaced in between these two rows. So for example, let's say we want to encrypt this message. So we, we search for letter K, right? K is replaced by letter I. So this is the first ciphertext letter. So we want to then encrypt letter A. So we search letter A, okay, it is in the first form, third position, and replace with the opposite character, that is letter, letter Z, and so on. So decryption is the same. So we want to decrypt letter I. So we search for letter I where it is in the table. Here it is. So then we replace letter I with the opposite, opposite character, letter K. We get back the first plain text. So letter is it? Okay, here it is. Replaced by the opposite of the letter A. So we get the second letter as well. Like that. So that's how it, the decryption happens. So those cycles works manually, you know, in that time there were no computers. So everything works manually. So the algorithms are optimized to work in the manual, using manual method. Those ciphers or the encryption algorithms cannot use today due to a specific reason. Reason is the alphabets in the world has known frequencies. They have known frequencies. So Kama Sutra is a cipher. Consider has monoalphabetic substitution ciphers. So we substitute letter, one letter at a time, one letter at a time. So all the alphabet in the world has known frequencies. What is the reason we cannot use that? So let's take example, English alphabet. In the English alphabet, this graph shows the letter frequencies. Actually, this characters shifted here a little bit. So this one is actually letter A, this letter B, letter C, letter D, letter E. This is not letter D, actually letter E. So in the English alphabet, letter E usually has the highest frequency. And the letter Z usually has the lowest frequency. Assume. I access a ciphertext encrypted data. So I want to break it. What should I do? So assume I knew this encrypted using the Caesar cipher. So then what should I do? Uh, what, what should I do is I simply take the letter frequency of the ciphertext. When I calculate the letter frequency of the ciphertext, assume I get the highest frequency for letter A. Highest frequency for the letter A. So by theory I know if that message is in English, the highest frequency must be letter E. So but I got it as letter A. That means the sender 
has replaced letter E by letter A. So then I know the key used by that first chart there. I can leave it entire message. So in the monoalphabetic substitution, or in other words, we substitute one character at a time. So that can be easily cracked using letter frequencies. So we are not suggest or not, we, are, we cannot use these methods in the modern world. Opposite to this monoalphabetic substitution, there are a set of encryption algorithms called polyalphabetic substitution. In the polyalphabetic substitution, instead of one table, we use two different tables to encrypt and decrypt the data. So in the first table we apply to the even po odd position of the letters, and the second table we apply to the even position of the letters. So then two tables and even positions we use one, odd position we use the other. So what is the advantage of doing that? Advantage is, so if you use two tables, letter E, highest frequency letter, sometimes may replace using first table, sometimes may replace using the second table. Because of that, frequencies or the ciphertext may normalize, not match into the theoretical language frequency. So that creates a little harder to break the encryption. So in addition to this simple two tables, there are several other methods of encryption, historical encryption, so one called it as transposition, permutation encryption. So in this permutation encryption method, we use entire character set, entire message for the encryption. Sender and recipient should agree how many columns you use for encryption. Assume five positions. So then, message, we write into five columns. And then we do encryption. Encryption is actually we read it through the column in this way. We break it, our message, into this known number of columns. And then we read like this to get the encrypted data. So the opposite is the decryption. All those historical cycles, actually we are not using at present. I discussed those just to give you a feeling about encryption and decryption. But there is a one historical cycle we still use today. So that's called it as Vernon cycle. Some people call it as one time pair. So that method invented in 1970s by Gilbert Vernon and Joseph Moore. Usually 100 years ago. No computer at that time. All process was manual. The algorithm they invented at that time can use after 200 years, still can use with these digital computers. Their method is the fastest encryption method even today. So we usually refer that as binary learning cycle nowadays. That cipher, binary one and more one time pair, that what happened? Sender and recipient should share a set of random numbers. 
between the sender and the recipient. So they should have random numbers equivalent to the message. So if you have 10 character message, we need to have a key length 10, 10 character key. We have 20 character message. We should have 20 character key. So that key must share between sender and recipient. So that key should be random. We should not reuse that key. So then what happened 100 years ago? So they assigned a number to each character and then this number will add together and mod 26 and take the reminder. Reminder will be mapped back to the alphabet. Each alphabet they give a number. So the plain text will map into this number. They are random key also map into this number. Then alphabet characters and random numbers they added together and modular take modular 26 or 26. And the final answer will remap back to the alphabet. So this is ciphertext. So if you want to decrypt, that ciphertext will map back to the numbers and the recipient person who decrypts should have this random pattern again. So then they add together mod 26, take the plain text back. Nowadays, you know, we use digital computers. In the digital computers, everything is binary. So we can apply binary Vernon cipher in binary mode, which is much easier because in the binary but we have zeros and one so when you take mod 20 instead of mod 26 you can take mod 2 in binary one so mod 2 is x operation you know simple x operation in computer science you know and operation operation x operation so i think you know about those binary operations so then in the modern binary Vernon cipher, what we do, what we would do, we convert all our plain text into the binary. So any data in computer is binary, zeros and ones. Assume that is our plain text in binary form. So we should have a key equal to the message size. So assume this is our random key equal to this plain text message. Then we do encryption. Encryption is just binary X operation. So so we do X one one zero 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 is zero one one is zero one zero is one like that binary X. So the result is the cipher text. So we transmit the ciphertext to our recipient. The recipient then has this ciphertext and he must have the same random string. How do you transfer this random key to the recipient? We discuss it in a minute. As if recipient has this random string and the ciphertext he wants to take the plain text back. What would be the decryption algorithm? In this world, encryption and the decryption algorithm is the same. That is binary X operation. So he do X operation, ciphertext and the random data, like here, 011, 000, 011, one zero one like that. And you see he get back the plain text. So in the hardware layer, XO is the fastest operation. So we convert our data into the binary form 
and do encryption and decryption in the fastest way. So that is Vernon side, binary Vernon side. What would be the problem executing this method? The main issue in the, this method is sharing the key. So this random stream must share with the between sender and recipient. How do you do that? We cannot have simple password as key. We need to have longer key sizes equal to the message size. So then how, we, how do we share it? I mentioned. So we are using this 100 years ago. How do we do it in 100 years ago? How did they do? How did they remember those keys? Actually, in the First World War, they use a book. The book is a Bible. Every soldier is supposed to take a Bible to the battlefield. Before they go into the battlefield, they have agreed a page number in the Bible with their commanders. So then in the battlefield, if they want to send a message, they write down the message, turn to the page, which they agree, and take the first letters in that page and write it down and do this operation and cut it down those letters. So in the next message, start with that. So in other words, they take the random numbers from a book, starting from a page they agree with the ICP. So books are very good methods of getting random numbers. So those random numbers, we call it as true random numbers. In terms of, in, instead of books, nowadays, we can use maybe CDs, music on YouTube, or music on a video on a YouTube, or music on whatever, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? To get the random keys. So we agreed to generate random numbers, maybe using a YouTube video. So we share that video name with our recipient and pick that video and pick the binary data and start encrypt our data. So the recipient should pick the same CD or the video from the internet and do the same. So you see, using some common source, senders and recipients can create a sequence of two random numbers to execute a random cycle. Right. So, but most of the computer programs which implement this, implement this random cycle use pseudo random generators, not the two random generators. In the pseudo-random generators, we use a mathematical algorithm to generate random numbers. So each algorithm has an initial value which is need to apply to the algorithm. This initial value, call it as a seed, seed number of the algorithm. So so we give initial value to the mathematical functions like here. So then that function created some number. So that taken as an initial value to the next number generation and so on. So like that, starting from one initial value or what we call one C, we can create a sequence of and sequence of random numbers. So in the pseudo random numbers, so after generating a sequence, so that set of numbers pattern repeat. So that is a basic property of pseudo random generation. 
So based on their function, mathematical equation, and based on the seed value, the pattern it generate, generate varies. So whatever algorithm, whatever seed, always creates finite set of random numbers. So that finite set repeat after some time. So that is, it is the basic property of pseudo random generation. So if it is a good pseudo generator, so it could generate maybe millions, trillions of numbers. If it is a bad generator, maybe 100 numbers, after generating 100 numbers, the pattern might repeat. So there are methods available to use Vernon cipher and pseudo generators. There are methods available to break this, to find the number of patterns by looking at these repeat blocks. So if that data repeat in the short time intervals, so attackers are easily can break these algorithms. That happens for the Wi-Fi security protocol introduced somewhere in the beginning of 2000. So they use a pseudo generator, which use a algorithm called RC4. So that can be broken within 20 minutes of time by identifying repeated pseudo patterns. Any encryption algorithms in the world can categorize into two groups. Call it as stream ciphers and block ciphers. Stream ciphers encrypt one character at a time. Block ciphers require entire data block for the encryption. So we have discussed several encryption methods so far. Caesar, palms of throne, permutation, Vernon. Among those encryption algorithms, except the permutation cipher, all of them are stream ciphers. Stream cipher means they take one character over one bit at a time and then do the encryption and the decryption for this particular bit or the byte. Other group need entire message or a block of a character for the encryption. So permutation cipher is such algorithm. So however, modern encryption, most of the modern encryption algorithms which we're going to study in next few lectures are block ciphers. So we consider block ciphers as safer, stronger than stream ciphers. But they have their own applications and their own advantage and the disadvantage for example, let's take a stream cipher. Stream cipher encrypts one character at a time. Because of that, the encryption, decryption is fast. So assume we use that to transmit a video. So soon as one or voice call, is a voice call, transmit a voice call. When one byte is ready for send, the system can encrypt it and transmit. So in, in case we use a 
block cipher to that, we have to wait to fill the data, fill the block before encryption, because block cipher requires a set of characters at one time, set of characters to do encryption, more than one character. So then system has to wait till the rest of the characters arrive for the encryption. But in the stream cipher, that is not the case. So one character is ready, can do the encryption. So they are speed. And they have low error propagation. That means during the transmission, if attacker or due to physical error, assume one bit get flips, that only affect to the decryption of that particular bit or byte. That may not going to affect rest of the communication. Because if one flip, that may not, if not get decrypted, rest will decrypt correctly. So we say, because of that, we say it has low error propagation. So these are the advantage. Because of these advantages, so we recommend to use stream ciphers in real-time communication, such as voice calls, maybe video transmissions, video conferencing encryptions, like that. Faster real-time ciphers are the stream ciphers. So in the disadvantages, they have low diffusion and substitute susceptible to a malicious insertion and modification of things. So if it is a stream cycle, so one can perhaps, for example, let's assume someone use stream cycles to transfer, to transmit a bank transfer message from one side to the other side maybe an ATM machine to the bank. So transaction message consists of account numbers and amounts. Someone can identify maybe first 10 bytes is account number and then next eight bytes is the amount and maybe last eight bytes is the destination account number like that. So then if they know so you are using stream cipher to transmit this message and they can easily flip some bits in any of these positions source destination or the mode. so if they flip that bits bits so the other side that data get decrypts to a different number so that number may be a different source different destination or different amount. So then your system won't trouble. But in this communication block cipher use that may not happen. Because blocks and encrypt entire data set at a time. Because of that, if someone gets first one bit or one byte, entire block is not properly details. Because of that, recipient can detect that alteration. So we will see later on how that happens. So here what I want to give you a feeling that in the stream ciphers, attackers can insert or modify the ciphertext without detecting at the recipients. Similarly, we see it has a, a disadvantage for lower decryption. Diffusion refers on the property of kind of hiding the information within a set of characters. So I'm not going in such detail in this lecture series. Next, we take block ciphers. In the block cipher, we take a set of characters at a time 
for the encryption and then do encryption by applying the key and it produces the set of ciphertext. Plain text character, apply the key, produce ciphertext character. If the particular algorithm require eight bytes in one cycle, we must enter all eight bytes. One byte we cannot encrypt, we, want, we have to wait till all eight byte receives before executing the encryption. Because of that, so we say it has a disadvantage of slowness compared to the stream cycles. Stream cipher, as soon as the data is ready, we can send, but block cipher, as we have to wait until the block is ready. So it is slow. Then error will propagate because if someone flip, flip, flip the bit in one character during the transmission, entire block cannot decrypt properly. So the, all the data after this alterations need to be thrown out or need to be discarded. So error occurs on one byte may affect to the rest of the communication in the block encryption. Because of that, we say in this mode, this block ciphers error propagate as a disadvantage. As an advantage, those block ciphers as a property called diffusion is a main property which any encryption system should have. So we usually test block cipher as good diffusion. Not only that, it's immune to the insertion attacks. So someone insert a bogus character, entire block get the affected. So the recipient can detect it and identify someone has done a malicious act. So because of that, usually most of the modern ciphers we this design as a block ciphers. So we're going to discuss two modern block ciphers called AES and DES. Both are block ciphers. Modern ciphers are block ciphers. So but some application like real-time communication, block ciphers are not suitable. So there we need stream ciphers. So since most of the bottom ciphers are block ciphers, so we need to convert those block ciphers into a stream ciphers when we do real time communication. So we will learn how those things happen in very abstract level in next few lectures. So the ciphers which discussed so far, ciphers, encryption algorithms, we discussed so far, are most of them stream ciphers, except this permutation cipher. Basically in the encryption world, what we should design, what we should do in designing the cipher algorithm is somehow we have to do permutation or to replace characters to make difficult into a paper to analyze the ciphertext to get the key. So otherwise, if we don't combine those methods in complex ways, so attackers can analyze the ciphertext and obtain the security keys. So we should stop this at the design of ciphers. So the main principle we should use is the Kirchhoff principle, I mentioned that. Why we need to follow this principle? Because when you implement the systems, 
algorithms are difficult to change. Cannot have algorithms from each pair of the communication. So we say, because of that, we say, we should have common algorithm. Everybody knows their algorithm and secrecy of communication should achieve by changing a security key. That security key is only known to the sender and the recipient. So then they can only do the encryption and decryption. So most of the modern ciphers follows this search of principle. As a final word, we need to analyze the strength of those encryption and decryption algorithms. All modern cryptographic algorithms, modern and history, history historical, all algorithms, all cryptographic algorithms, use as a security key. The strength of the algorithm is actually strength of the key that is the culture principle so strength of the key actually depend on the size of the key because nowadays we have very fast computers so with those fast computers attackers has the opportunity to try out all possible combinations of the keys to find the sacred message. So for example, I received some encrypted data. I want to break it out. I know it might use the algorithm X. Then I know this algorithm X use a eight byte key. So, 8 by key means it has 2 to the power 8 number of combination of the keys. Sorry, 8 byte means 8 to 64 bits. 8 byte means 8 multiplied 64 bit. So, maximum number of combination there is 2 to the power 64. to the power 64 bits. If key size is 32 bits, that means four bytes, number of keys we can have to the power 32. So for example, usually in our ATM cards, we use four byte pin, that is 32 bit keys. So number of maximum keys this. So, Someone can try all possible combinations, start from 00, then 001, and so on. Finally, 111, if you need to. In this space, one would be the, one must be the key. So time to break this algorithm actually is time to search through this key space. If somebody try to do so, we say he is executing brute force search for the brute force attack. All the cryptographic algorithms, we could execute brute force attacks. That means if you have encrypted document, we could try all possible of combination of the keys to see whether one would match, definitely one would match. So if our key size is larger, size of the search space is larger, so then it takes some time to search. So for example, if 32 bit keys, it takes 2.2 milliseconds to search. If the key size is 56 bits, usually it takes 10 hours. Key size is this, it takes this much of years. If key size is 164, eight, it takes this much of years to search. 
So this table has created a few years ago. So after that, we have faster computers in the market. So that because of that, these figures might change. But usually, nowadays we tell, if the key size is 56 bits, we can break it in less than five minutes, not 10 hours, less than five minutes. Just using root cause. So anybody can execute this root cause attack on the any encryption algorithm. So only way to resist these attacks are to use large keys. As you may understood because of this, what we are achieving using cryptography is something called it as computational security. Computational security refers the strength that is based on the computer power. If you have more power of the resources, we can break the algorithm faster. So in other words, if there is an algorithm which can be broken using um, computer power, so that algorithms are considered to be as computationally secure algorithms. So they are secure as long as attacker may not have enough computing power. As soon as attacker get the enough computing power, they may break those algorithms. So all the modern cryptographic algorithms consider as computationally secure algorithms. Opposite to that, there is a set of algorithms called unconditional security algorithms or unconditionally secure algorithms. So this category called as quantum cryptography. So people try to use quantum physics theories behind quantums to build cryptographic algorithm, cryptographic key exchange. So that called it as quantum cryptography. In the quantum cryptographic algorithms and quantum key exchange algorithms cannot be broken by improving the computing power. That means they are not depend on the computer power. If algorithms not depend on the power of the computer, we call such algorithms uh, we call such algorithms unconditionally secure algorithms. They are secure and they don't depend on the computing power because of that they are secure kind of oil. But the most of the algorithm we use today is not secure, however, they are okay to use until we have some limit of computer power. So in other words, the algorithm we use today, like 2020, definitely cannot use in 2030, because in 10 years time, definitely we have powerful computers so with that powerful machines, we can put those the algorithms we have today in millisecond times. So that is true for modern cryptographic algorithm, except quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptographic algorithms are still practical. They use the world. They are still in the theoretical development level. They are not commercially used in the world. Because of that, all the algorithms we use today in our activities are computation is equal. 
Det er sikkert af en arm. Og det er okay at use right now. Så det er hvad vi kan se. Så so maybe in the previous time, with the due to the increase of the power, so those algorithms would be broken. So with that note, I conclude this session where I give a basic abstraction or the basic introduction to the foundation of cryptography. So, so I will deliver two or three other lectures on cryptography to cover this area before I move on to the OSIN tools. So, so objective of this OSIN course to give you a feeling about the foundation of information security, to protect yourself against such OSIN tools in one side. The other side, give you a feeling about the methods, tools, method, uh, and mechanisms used by the people to grab your information and create actionable reports. Cryptography is used sometimes to grab the publicly available information. Plus, it used sometimes to stop such. Similarly, we should know about cryptography to study, analyze, study and analyze cryptocurrencies, new methods or new instruments of payments. OSINT require, especially the financial investigations or financial information gathering they are nowadays cryptocurrencies are the foundations. Cryptocurrencies are the very popular instrument used by especially bad, bad guys. So if you are do an investigator or intelligent officer, we definitely should know who are the drug dealers, who are the weapon dealers who take the legal money and so on. So then you should analyze cryptocurrencies. So without having knowledge of cryptography, you may not be able to do so. So we cover cryptography as a foundation in this OSIN course. So as I mentioned, so this is a first introduction to cryptography we'll do two or three other lectures to cover it up and to give you a feeling why you want to learn it as an OSIN professional, as an OSIN professional, why should you learn it? To convince you, so I will do two or three more lectures in the topic before I move on to other OSIN topics in this course. In the next lecture onwards, I, I try to give you a small activity in each week. So you're supposed to do those activities and approve the evidence of doing that activity to the elements. So by doing this, you will earn some marks. So that's how I conduct assignments. So those activities considered as assignments of this particular course. With that remark, I will conclude this lecture. Thank you very much for listening so far. Bye.